On Sunday, December 19th, 2021, Oita Trinita played in their first ever Emperor's Cup final. Ultimately, they fell short, losing 2-1 to Urawa Reds. But it was an incredible achievement by Trinita to even reach the final. And it was the latest twist of a wild roller coaster ride for the club. A club that went from this to this in the space of just 12 months and a club that survived against the odds. So, what happened to Oita Trinita? Let's find out. As you would expect with Oita Trinita, their journey to this season's Emperor's Cup final was anything but ordinary. They scraped past JFL side Honda Lock 3-2 after extra time in the second round, and needed extra time again in the fourth round to get past J2 team the Sparkusas Guma. But the most remarkable result came in the semi-final, where they knocked out J1 champions and last season's Emperor's Cup winners Kawasaki Frontale. This cup run came against the background of a J1 relegation battle, which Trinita ultimately lost. Their relegation was confirmed just one week before they stunned Frontale in the semi-final. This Emperor's Cup run was just the latest moment of craziness in the life of Oita Trinita. The club hail from Oita City in Oita Prefecture, a corner of Kyushu famous for hot springs. And the club play their home games at the stunning Showa Denko Dome, which was built for the 2002 FIFA World Cup and also hosted games at the 2019 Rugby World Cup. The club were founded in 1994 as the Oita Football Club, starting out in the Oita Prefecture League. In 1995, they moved up to the regional Kyushu League, before entering the former Japan Football League in 1996, putting them on course for the J League. And in 1999, under the new name of Oita Trinita, they became a founding member of J2. And their rapid rise continued in 2002, when they won the title to gain promotion to the top flight. The club's best season came in 2008, when they mounted an unlikely title challenge, ultimately finishing 4th and winning the J League Cup. But Oita fell back down to earth in 2009. They went on a club record run of 14 consecutive defeats and were, unsurprisingly, relegated at the end of the season. Poor form on the pitch wasn't the only problem facing the club. Off the field, Trinita were dealing with catastrophic financial issues that threatened the very existence of the club. Painthouse, a home remodeling company, had been involved in the running of the club since 1999, but in 2004 they withdrew their backing, and by September 2005 the club's situation was described as extremely difficult and that securing capital is an urgent issue. Later that month, Trinita received a loan of 200 million yen from the Oita Prefecture Sports Culture Promotion Foundation to help keep them going. The financial situation improved in 2006 when pachinko company Maruhan became one of the club's main sponsors. Without going too deep into the world of pachinko, it's basically a pinball-like arcade game that unofficially allows players to gamble. Therefore, Maruhan fell foul of J-League rules against companies of this type sponsoring teams. However, due to Trinita's perilous financial situation, they were allowed to keep their Maruhan sponsorship. But in 2009, Maruhan did end their sponsorship, and Oita slipped into even deeper money trouble. The club were over 1 billion yen in debt, around 8.7 million dollars, and at one stage looked like they would be unable to finish the 2009 season. In November 2009, they became the first club to request a J-League emergency loan, and received an initial 600 million yen. The club struggled along. They received a bridging loan from a local bank, set up donation boxes to raise further funds, and were given free usage of their city-owned stadium. Remarkably though, despite having to release players and staff, and having a drastically reduced operating budget, the club stabilised back in J2, and incredibly won promotion back to J1 for the 2013 season. But it was a false dawn. A single season back in the top flight ended in relegation. 
before things got much worse. A 7th place finish in J2 in 2014 wasn't built upon, and in 2015 Trinita slumped into the relegation zone and dropped down to J3. And here begins one of the most rapid ascents in the history of the J-League, and one of the most remarkable recoveries. Trinita won the J3 title at the first attempt, a 9th place finish in J2 followed, before they went on to finish 2nd in 2018 and return to J1. In the space of just 7 seasons, the club had fallen from J1 to J3 and climbed all the way back up again. And one of the biggest reasons for this was the incredible work of head coach Tomohiro Katanosaka, who oversaw the club's rise all the way from J3 up to J1 and into the Emperor's Cup final. Katanosaka formerly played for Oita before taking up some junior coaching roles with the club. And when the club hit rock bottom in 2016, he stepped up to become head coach. The J3 title immediately followed, then promotion from J2 in 2018, a consolidation period in J1, and then the Emperor's Cup Final in 2021. A cup final that would be his final game in charge of the club. In 2022, he'll be in charge at Gamba Osaka. It's undoubtedly a big loss for Oita, and surely a smart appointment for Gamba. In 2021, Trinita once again were relegated from J1, but still managed to make history by reaching the Emperor's Cup final. And we should expect nothing less from a team that has shown so much fighting spirit over the years. And for the fans, who suffered the brunt of the financial meltdown that nearly destroyed the club, let's hope the future of Oita Trinita will be more stable. Thank you for watching.